Hey, Rio Grande third graders. It's good to be back from Easter break. It is Tuesday, and we are going to look at our week 27, day one. Even though it's Tuesday, I know we usually do day one on Monday, but today's Tuesday, so that means that on Monday, um, since we had Easter break, we will be doing a DMA on Friday. So let's take a look at our first set of problems. Our first set of problems are division and multiplication equations. Notice I said equations. And this first one, if you noticed, has a variable. That means that we're trying to find out what number would complete this equation. So what number is going to complete this equation? So if we have 32 objects and we're sharing them equally or dividing them into equal parts, how many groups of eight are we going to be able to make out of these 32 objects? So we could do a few things. We could add groups of eight. So here's a group of eight. And here's a group of eight. That makes 16. Here's a group of eight. That makes, right, 24. And here's a group of eight. That makes, yes, 32. So eight plus eight is 16. Eight plus eight is 16. Six and six makes 12. 10 and 10 makes 20. 20 and 12 is 40, 30, excuse me, 32. So 32, how many groups of eight were we able to use to make this 32? One, two, three, four. So there, this n, n is equal to four. Now, there's another way that you could also do this. You could subtract groups of eight starting with 32. So you really need to know those multiples of eight so you can subtract. So subtract 38 from 32. Take away 2, then 6. That's the way I like to think of it. Take away 2 from here, that's 30. Take away 6, that's 24. If I start with that 24 and take another group of 8 away, I'm going to break it up as 4 and 4, because I'm going to take this 4 away, which makes 20, and take 4 more, and now I'm at 16. Take 16, subtract 8, and since I know 8 plus 8 is 16, 8 plus 8 is 16, I know that I can check my subtraction by going backwards and using addition. And finally, 8 minus 8 is going to give me 0. And so how many groups of 8 was I able to subtract starting with 32? 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, that's 4 groups of 8 that I was able to take and share equally from the 32. So just a couple of different ways to think about it. Let's take a look at next one is 18 divided by 3. How many, how many is going to go in eight each group? Again, I like to start with fives. 5, 10, 15, that works. Now I can go by ones, 16, 17, 18. Well, when I take this five and add one more, that gives me six total, right? So each group has six. So 18 broken up into three equal groups will give me six in each group, six in each each group. And this is called my quotient. My quotient can either be the groups or the amount in each group, depending on if you want to switch your quotient and your divisor. This is called your divisor. Dividend, divisor, quotient. Dividend, divisor, quotient. Now we have a multiplication problem. You have two factors here. Again, what do we call them? Factors. 
and we are looking for the product. Remember your product is all the objects together once you add the groups of three here in this case. So I have five groups of three. Three plus three plus three plus three plus three. Three plus three is six plus another three is nine plus another three is twelve plus another three is fifteen. So 15 total objects in all. So these are my groups, whatever those groups may be. These are the number in each group. And here is my total. So this is what I want you to do today. Four, five times three, I want you to write a story problem that goes with this equation. So remember, you have to have in the story problem some groups. And in those groups, you have to have three in each group. And when you go to ask the question, the question should ask for the total. So for example, um, and you can't use this one, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an example. Um, David has three pens, or excuse me, he has five pens. David has five pens, and in each pen, he has three chickens. How many chickens does David have? So notice my groups were the pens. The three in each group are going to be the chickens. And the 15 total is going to end up being how many chickens does David have, which is looking for the total. Okay, so can't wait to see what kind of word problems you come up with today. The next problem is a fraction problem. It says divide this square. Remember, a square is a figure with four equal sides. Four equal sides, that means it's a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral is a four-sided figure. So a rectangle, or excuse me, a square is a quadrilateral. So it wants us to take it and break it up into eight equal pieces. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start with half, right down the middle. And then I'm going to take each half and I'm going to double it. Or, if I think about it, I could break it up into four equal pieces, and that's going to give me a denominator of eight equal parts, right? So if I take, break this down the middle, now I have fourths. Take each one of those fourths, break it down the center. Now I have eight equal parts. That's my denominator. My denominator tells me how many parts are in this whole square. I'm going to label each eighth, which is a unit fraction. Unit means one. I'm going to label each one of these unit fractions with one eighth. One eighth. One eighth. One eighth. So, again, and I, I guess I shouldn't say that because we're not really doing half, but I just wanted to kind of give you the idea of where we're getting this, where the, we're getting these eighths from when we cut each one of these halves into four equal pieces. Now we take and we've made eighths. All right, let's take a look at the next problem, and it's also a fraction problem. And it says, are the fractions half and three-fourths equivalent to each other. Are the fractions half and three-fourths equivalent to each other? Well, just by looking at the numerator, is three half of the four pieces that we have total? So let's take a look at this. This would be half, right? We have four equal parts. Three is not going to be half of four. So we can look at our number line also and say, oh wait, one-fourth, two-fourths, is right down the middle, is two half of my four pieces. Well, is two half of the four? When I take a look at that, yes, two is half of four because I have two here and two here. So I have two equal parts. And these two equal parts are half and these two equal parts are considered half. So two-fourths is equivalent to half, but it is not equivalent to... So how could we write that? 
I think I will show you how to write this using a unequal sign. So you put an equal sign and then you put a line through it. And this symbol means unequal or not equal. Un, notice how Miss Badger has been using un. Un means not, right? And so unequal is not equal. Half and three-fourths are not equal. Name two fractions on the number line that are equivalent. So we could say that one-half and two-fourths are equivalent. So those are two fractions on the number line that are equivalent. We also could say, if you wanted to, you could also say two halves and four fourths are also equivalent. And those are two fractions that are equivalent on this number line. Now, we, they didn't label these, but we could label them. So don't forget to go back and do that word problem for this um, equation. That's our, in our discussion for Tuesday, April 6th. Have a great day and see you during class meeting. Bye, guys.